All right, in this video, we're going to turn to some calculations involving integrated rate laws. If you are doing this for practice, then just pause the video and try the question yourself, show all your work. Um, if you're doing it to learn how to do this, then just follow with me as we go through. So the first question says sulfuryl chloride decomposes by first order kinetics, that's important, um, and has a rate constant um, at room temperature. Calculate the half-life for the reaction. So we know that each of the different orders has a different equation for its half-life. Um, the first order half-life equation, T1 half, is equal to 0 0.693 divided by K. 0 0.693, recall, was the natural log of 2. This equation for us at, at Grant Park is in our data booklets, otherwise you might, your teacher may require you to, uh, to know these, this equation if you're at a different school. So we want to take 0 0.693 and divide it by our rate constant, 2.81 times 10 to the minus 3 per minutes equals and looking at the units there, we're going to get um, the units for the half-life to be in minutes, right? So, oops, times 10 to the minus 3 equals, keeping three digits in my answer, 247 minutes. If you were asked for the uh, half-life in different units, you could now convert it to seconds or you can convert it to hours or whatever you like. Part B, how long would it take for the concentration of the SO2Cl2 to drop by 15%? Now that seems a little confusing because there's actually no concentrations mentioned at all. We're just asked to, for the how long for the concentration to fall by a certain percent. Of course, if it had said by 50%, then the question would have been trivial because the half-life, 247 minutes, is the time needed to drop by half. 15%, if it's only going to fall by this amount, um, means we're going to need much less than 247 minutes. Now, one thing you might want to note, that if the concentration has fallen by um, uh, 15%, then that means there's 85% remaining. And that's an important observation. So what we can do is we can choose any concentration we want and call that the starting concentration of the, of the sulfuryl chloride, anything you like. Um, for me, I'm going to choose a number which, uh, from, from a logarithm perspective, is a nice number to use. I'll choose the initial concentration to be one molarity. And that's because in a first order reaction, we do these natural log of that concentration, and the natural log of one will turn out to be zero. But you could use any number you like here. Then the concentration at time t, the amount that's left will be 85% of this, since 85% remains. So whatever number you picked as your starting concentration, multiply it by 0 0.85 and you'll have the concentration that's left at time t. So for me, there'll be 0 0.850 molarity remaining. So now I'm going to write my integrated first order rate law. This is on your data booklet or you might just know it. The natural log, and I'll just use the generic version, so I'll just say a at time t is negative kt plus the natural log of a times zero. If you don't want to use the letter a, then just put in the actual formula of our compound. So we're looking for the time required. Okay, so we're going to use the a at time t, the a zero, and the rate constant from the, from earlier in the question to find the time. So the time, if I just do some quick algebra here, I'll move the negative kt to this side of the equation, I'll move the natural log of a at time t to this side, and then I'll divide both sides by, neg by k. So I get t is going to equal the natural log of a at time 0 minus the natural log of a at time t, and divide all that by k, and that'll equal the time. So that's equal to the natural log of 1 minus the natural log of 0.85, all divided by 
the k was 2.81 times 10 to the minus 3 per minute. So look at my calculator, the natural log of 1, take away the natural log of 0.85 equals, and then divide that answer by 2.81 times 10 to the minus 3, and I get, rounding it off to three digits, I suppose, 57.8 minutes. Minutes again because the rate constant's time unit was per minute. And that makes sense because we said earlier to drop by half would have required 247 minutes. To drop by only 15 percent requires less than that. However, be a little careful. This is not a linear relationship. So if, for example, if we want to know how long to drop by 25 percent, you, should, you cannot reason that, well, 25 percent is half of 50 percent, so it would be half of this. That would be wrong. Okay? If you wanted to know how long to drop by 25 percent, you'd do what we did here. You'd say the starting concentration is this, whatever you like. The remaining amount would be 75 percent, and then you'd figure out how much is left after if you've lost 25 percent. Part C, if 15 grams, and right there I see something irritating, grams, is in a sealed vessel, 250 liter vessel at room temperature, what mass would be um, remaining after two hours? Now you could take this mass and the molar mass and calculate moles and then you could divide by the volume to get molarity. Then that would be your initial concentration. We could then calculate the concentration that remains after two hours and convert that back to grams. That's a very roundabout way to do it. However, we recall that in first order kinetics, natural logs are involved. Because that they create a unitless quantity, you can use any quantity in here that is proportional to concentration. So although it says natural log of concentrations, we could use natural log of anything that is proportional to concentration. So for example, moles and concentration, molarity, well, those are proportional. If you have twice as many moles, you'd have twice the concentration. Mass is also proportional, because if you have twice the mass, you'd have twice the moles, and again, therefore, twice the concentration. So because mass is proportional to concentrations, we can use masses in the first order integrated rate law and be okay. That only works for first order kinetics because the natural log is involved. If this were zero or second order kinetics, there is no natural log term, so therefore you'd have to convert these things to molarities. So be careful with that. So I'm gonna leave these in masses and I'm going to say the natural law. I've already written my equation. I won't rewrite it. The nat we're looking for the mass that will remain. That'll be my amount at time t. So I'll say the natural log of a at time t, that's what I'm going to find, is negative k. So k was 2.81 times 10 to the minus 3. It's smart to put the units in because it'll remind me that my time has to be in minutes. The time here was in hours. There's 3,600 seconds in one hour, so there'd be 7,200, whoops, I'm converting to, to minutes, 60 minutes in an hour, so two hours would be 120 minutes. And then plus the natural log of the original amount, which in this case was 15 grams. Okay, so equals negative 2.81, times 10 to the minus 3, times 120, and then plus the natural log of 15, and I get an answer of 2.37. So the natural log of A at time T is 2.37. To undo a natural logarithm, you use the e to the x feature of your calculator, so e to the power of 2.37 will equal the concentration, or the amount in this case, at time t. So that's going to be e to the power of 2.37 is 10.7 grams remains. Now we can ask, is that reasonable? 
Well, the half-life we saw earlier was 247 minutes. In this question, we've only been reacting for 180 minutes, sorry, 120 minutes, so that, that is less than the half-life. So therefore, um, if there had been a 247-minute interval, we would have gone from 15 down to 17 point, sorry, 7.5 grams. I apologize, I'm rushing to get this video done, so I'm making a few mistakes. So 15 grams would have dropped to 7.5 grams. Since we're less than one half-life, we've dropped from 15 to something greater than 7.5 grams. So that answer is reasonable. Part D, another experiment at a different temperature was set up. After 175 minutes, the SO2 concentration was equal to 0.124. After 305 minutes, it was equal to 0.057 molarity. Calculate the rate constant at this new temperature. So rate constants depend on temperatures. Um, that rate constant will be different than what we had earlier. So what can we do here? Well, we know after a certain time, the concentration was this, and after this time, um, it was equal to this. Well, that's, what can we do with that? Well, what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to choose this initial concentration point, 124. I'm going to say that the original concentration is 0.124 molar. Now you might object and say, well, it wasn't. It was, this was the concentration after 175 minutes. That's true, but watch what I'm going to do here. The concentration, I'll say, at time t is 0.057 molarity. But now look what I'm going to use for my time. Since I'm choosing this as the starting concentration, then I'm starting, it's as though I'm starting timing from this point. But this was at 175 minutes. How long would it take then to go from this to this concentration? Well, if this was at 305 minutes, the difference in those two times will be the time required to drop from this to this. So I'm going to take 305 minutes minus 175 minutes, and I'm going to use for my time 130 minutes minutes. All right, so now I've got an initial and a final concentration and a time, I can jump in and find the, the rate constant. So the natural log of A at time T, 0.057, equals negative K, that's what I'm looking for, times the time, 130 minutes, plus the natural log of the original, which I decided was 0.124 molarity. So now, solving for k, I'm going to get, let's see, the natural log of 0.057. There's more than one way to do this. Take away the natural log of 0.124 equals, and then I'll divide this answer by negative 130 minutes. So divided by negative 130, and I get that the new rate constant is 0, 0.00, and I'll keep three digits, I suppose, 598. And then its units, because I divided by minutes, will be minutes to the minus one, or the same units that we had up above. Notice that that rate constant is larger than the original rate constant. That tells me that, that this new temperature must have been at a higher temperature than we had earlier. All right, a second question, this time involving second order kinetics. So again, if you know what you're doing, you can pause the video and, and try this yourself. So we're told the second order rate constant for the decomposition of NO2 is a certain number, 0.426, at a certain temperature, 525 Kelvin. How long would it take for the concentration to drop from 0.2 molar to half of its original concentration? Well, there might be more than one way to do that, but half of its original concentration, that, that's the half-life, isn't it? It's to go from its original concentration to half. So what I'm looking for here in this first one is the half-life. So I have a half-life formula for second-order kinetics. The half-life equation for second-order kinetics was, I'm doing this by memory real quick, 1 over um, k times the initial concentration 
of A. I'm hoping that is correct. I'm pretty sure that's right. Equals 1 over the rate constant, which was 0.426, times the original concentration, which was 0 0.200 molarity. So now 1 divided by 0.426 and divided again by 0.2 gives me a half-life of 11.7, and because the units for K involved seconds, this half-life will come out as seconds. Okay, so it's a pretty short half-life. It's a pretty fast reaction. How long would it take to drop to one-ninth ninth of its original concentration? Well, the original concentration, A0, was 0.2 molarity. So what I could do now is say A at time T would be one ninth of 0.2. So 0.2 divided by 9 is 0 0.0222 molarity. And we know the rate constant K is 0.426. So I'm going to use as the second order um, kinetics equation, 1 over A0 sorry, 1 over A at time T is equal to positive KT plus 1 over A0. And I know A0, AT, and K, I can go find the time. So 1 over 0 0.0222 equals 0 0.426 times the time plus 1 over the original concentration. Now, we could have used this same approach back in the earlier question. We could have said the original concentration is 0.2 and the new concentration is 0.1, half as much. Um, but I wanted to do that using the half-life formula just for a review. So this question here to solve for T now. So take the reciprocal of 0.022 and subtract the reciprocal of 0.2 equals and then divide that by 0.426 and I get now that the time is 94.0 seconds which makes some sense if you think about it it took a, almost 12 seconds to drop by half then to drop to 1 ninth which is a was going to take longer um, took 94 seconds so those two things um, are reasonable so those are just uh, two quick problems, multi-step questions involving first order integrated rates and second order integrated rates and how to, how to solve various problems with them.